Hey guys, Jared Beckwith here. I'm a registered EEG technologist, and in today's video, I have an exciting case study for you guys. So this one is a 66-year-old male who has had seizures since birth. They've had them since an infant, and now they're 66 years old, still having these seizures. Since the doctors aren't able to adequately control these seizures with medication, they've tried multiple medications and they still can't completely stop the seizures this is what is known as refractory epilepsy so this happens in about one third of patients on average and it's tough because what do you do when the medications aren't able to stop the seizures completely or make it livable enough that's a very difficult scenario so one thing that the doctors can possibly do is if the patient is having seizures that only originate in one specific part of the brain, then maybe after a bunch of testing, possibly the doctor can have a neurosurgeon remove the focus of the epilepsy and hopefully stop the patient's seizures. That is one option. Another option, if it's happening in just one specific area of the brain is a device called responsive neurostimulation. So it can send an electrical pulse to kind of like zap it and stop the seizures once it detects the seizure. And that's a little implantable electrodes, which can be removed. But if the doctor wants to actually remove the person's brain itself, can't put your brain back in. So this is a very important procedure and you want to make sure you get it right. So this patient had a one week epilepsy monitoring unit stay. They had seven days of EEG monitoring. That's just a bunch of electrodes hooked up to the patient's scalp. We glue it on with some gauze and we monitor the patient's brain waves for that week. And when the patient came in, the doctor had them weaned off of their medication. They were taking Lamictal and one other anti-epileptic drug, which I forget. They also, during this day, they sleep deprived the patient. Now, why is the doctor taking the patient off their seizure meds and sleep depriving them? Well, while they're in the epilepsy monitoring unit with the nursing staff around, with the EEG monitoring techs, this is the ideal time to have a seizure and record it and help localize where in the brain is it happening. So we're actually trying to provoke a seizure, but be on EEG monitoring so we get good data and possibly see if this is a candidate for epilepsy surgery. So we are able to actually capture a seizure in this patient and I wanted to show you guys it right now. So this patient was weaned off their medication, put on EEG monitoring long-term for seven days. And since they were off their medication, we are able to capture some seizures. So if we check in the trends, especially if you're going over seven days of data, this is gonna be your best friend to check any major changes in brain activity. So if we see right here, it starts out at a background of around nine waves per second. You see that 10 right there, this horizontal line that represents the background and that's a good normal background but right here we see a major change it's completely all red this i would say initially looks like major artifact and sometimes major artifact can also contain a seizure whether it's an epileptic seizure or sometimes as you guys know psychogenic non-epileptic seizures those just look like major artifacts as well so here's the artifact that we saw on the trends. And this time I already know that this is the seizure. So I checked beforehand, I cheated guys, but it looks really messy. It's hard to see, but if we are able to reduce the artifacts, we can see that in the, around the F7 area, you can see these sharply contoured discharges. They're rhythmic, they happen over time, it evolves and it slowly goes away now. And as we go back, we can look at it some more. Looks beautiful guys, but we can look at it in another montage, transverse montage, let's check it out. Let's check it out before, this is on 
regular sensitivity, you're just going to be seeing this, but we can kind of cheat, guys, because before, earlier in the EEG, the patient was having focal slowing in the F7 area, so slowing that only happens in that one specific spot, and focal sharp waves happening in their sleep, so like individual sharp waves just at that F7 area. So if we keep a close eye on it, even though there's a lot of noise here, yes, if we see something like this, we can investigate with, your, with our artifact reduction filter. And while it doesn't perfectly filter out all the muscle, it makes it much more clear. And we can see these rhythmic epileptiform discharges, probably maximal around the F7 area, uh, left anterior temporal lobe, my friends. This is where this person's likely epileptogenic zone is. And this is where the surgeon would target their surgery to hopefully stop this patient's seizure so this no longer happens to them. One thing a doctor could do in the future to prepare this patient for epilepsy surgery is called the WADA test. Now this test puts half of your brain to sleep at a time and the doctor will show the patient while half of the brain is asleep different objects, ask them to remember these objects, and they'll talk to them while half of their brain is asleep. They'll do the left side first, and then they'll do the right side, because they're going to want to know, do you have memory on one side of your head, the other side of your head, or both sides? So, like, for example, if you're able to have memory on both sides of your head, and if the doctor ends up taking out part of the left side of your brain, you'll know that you'll still be able to remember things, but if their memory is only on their left side, it might be a lot more dangerous to take out a part of their brain. You don't want to stop the patient's seizures, but in the end, kill their ability to remember things. And that, my friends, is called the eloquent cortex. This part of the brain where it has all the essential functions. It covers your memory, your sight, your speech, your motor movements. You don't want to remove the eloquent cortex. So we want to make sure the patient is able to be fully functional and hopefully seizure free if they are in fact able to remove this part of the brain where there are the epileptic discharges. So that's it guys. I hope you guys learned something about the process that the patient goes through in the epilepsy monitoring unit. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Hit the like button if you liked it. I love you guys.